Hi everyone, I'm uh, really happy to be here today. I'm uh, Irena grabovic zui from the Yao Research. Uh, I, I worked there for the last three years and uh, our office is located in Haifa. And what is special about Yao Research is that uh, we develop algorithms that integrated in Yao products, uh, large scale systems, but we also publish uh, papers in top conferences about our work. Uh, so I'm, I'm from mail team, Yao mail team, and uh, a lot of projects in our team are focused on machine generated mail. So before I want to explain what I mean by machine generated message, it's a message that were created by script, by machine, and was not written by a human being. For example, flight itinerary, order confirmation, Facebook notification, and so on. So I said that uh, we're working uh, in Yao research, we do big data analysis. So what are the three big data, real big data sources in the world? Can you guess? So photos, I thought it's obvious. Photos and videos, they are, uh, yeah. So the third one is actually mail, <laughs> as you can guess. It's a, uh, uh, this is a, much larger than every data source you can imagine. So according to statistics I found uh, lately in the press, we have about 225 million monthly active users in Yao. So you can imagine that the traffic and the volume of the data we have is really big data. <clears throat> so I said that we are, will talk about machine generated messages, right? So uh, uh, guess what percentage of the messages according to our uh, analysis in Yao Mail, is machine generated and was not written by a human being. 20%. Ma <laughs> Close. And it's only increasing. 95% of the data is machine generated. <laughs> okay, so what, what is uh, special about this data? What is uh, characteristics? It's highly structured. Obviously, the, it was written by a script and not a person. It has tables, uh, right, uh, headers. Also, it repeats at large scale. No one will write a script, a script to generate one or two messages. Some scripts used to generate hundreds of thousands of messages. But it's the opposite of spam. This is a, a gold mine of personal data. There is a lot of interesting information there that is very personal about where you're flying to, what you love to buy, and so on. So we, we want to analyze this data for the different features we can make in mail. For example, we have the smart views in Yao Mail to show in the different categories the messages. And obviously, it's based on the machine, for the machine generated messages when they, uh, people is actually about the messages that were not machine generated. Another interesting uh, user feature is extractions. So for in extractions, lately we came with a clip coupons uh, feature. Everyone can uh, look on their coupons, uh, see what they're interested in, to clip it, and then you will, they will get a notification, your coupon will expire. How you can achieve it? How you can make this automatically? So you need the algorithm behind it that will know how to extract the data. To extract the data is to uh, locate in the message the fields that are interesting and also to give a correct annotation to each field based on the context. For example, if this uh, anon <laughs> anonymized message is, a, a, for example, purchase, then I want to know what is the order number, if you will have later the shipment uh, confirmation and the total price and what item you purchased. So these projects are all uh, interesting and use the fact that we, use, we have a lot of machine generated messages. We also, uh, it's a big potential for revenue. All the targeting and ads are using also this data to help show ads that you are interested in based on what we know about you from those machine generated messages. So the first step in uh, many algorithms and use cases for machine generated mail analysis is to group messages that were generated, created by the same script. Uh, we, we have suggested a, 
a new method for clustering. And I will start with the first method of clustering that also was <laughs> suggested in our office by the MEL team. Uh, we called it a template. At first, we tried to cluster messages based on the sender on only the subject on the regex. For example, uh, all the messages that came from Amazon.com and the subject is your order of something has shipped. Or for uh, travel and so on. You can uh, maximum several wildcards, but not more sophisticated regexes. And we we used those kind of templates of clusters, and based on those clusters, we did the clustering or uh, uh, extractions. But we saw that this method has several limitations. For example, it's not inconsistent. Okay, one template can uh, include various mail message structures. And this is uh, uh, an issue when we want to do automatic tasks, mail mining. Also, it's incomplete because uh, some messages that has similar content and uh, structure will not be uh, associated uh, with the same template. Uh, the best example is when the messages are in different languages. So you can visually see that the messages I added are from the same structure and uh, the name of the user will be in the same location in the HTML, in the message, but the subjects are in different languages, so obviously it will not be clustered in the same template. So what my team suggested is to do structural clustering. A clustering based on the structure of the body, we called it X cluster, and uh, it relies on the message DOM tree. When I say DOM tree, I mean about the schema, HTML schema of the message, only the HTML tags, not the content itself, because it will be different from message to message, but the HTML, because it was created by a script, will be the same, right? And it's represented by hash signature. I will just say that this algorithm is uh, linear and very simple and scalable. It was very important because I started with the fact that it is really big data. We can't uh, use uh, some maybe more sophisticated clustering methods, but they will be slow or uh, high latency. It's not something we can allow ourselves. So this is very fast algorithm and also efficient. So this is example of two messages that I expect to be in the same X cluster. As you see, the information inside is not the same, right? This product is different from that product. But the structure is exactly the same. At first, you have the name of the user, you have here the address and the product he purchased and the price. So let's go by an example. I will show you how this algorithm works. This uh, method of clustering was published uh, in a paper a few years, two years ago, I think. I will give the reference at the end of the presentation. So let's assume we received this uh, simple uh, message. And we want to know that it belongs to the X cluster with that signature. Okay, and we don't know anything about other messages. This is all we have. First, we will look on each H uh, its HTML DOM tree. Okay, and we will uh, focus only on the uh, passes that ends with textual node. Uh, and do uh, you understand, right? Uh, do you have a question how to transform this to the HTML DOM tree? Do you want me? Explain about it? <laughs> okay. And then I just travel the, uh, traverse the tree and uh, I create ordered list of Xpasses. Uh, Xpass is actually just a concatenation of the HTML tags in the path to the textual leaf. When I have the ordered list of Xpasses, I will just run some uh, a hash function on the, the string and I will receive my signature that will represent the X cluster that this message belongs to. Okay, so you see it's linear, it's very f relatively fast and it's scalable. You don't need to see all the messages. You can do it concurrently. Uh, this is the current algorithm we are using for clustering. Questions? Yeah. How, how do you do with people changing the template? So all the time. When I build a system like that, every time someone upgrades the template system. Template exactly. So if the use cases after the clustering is automatic, right? You, you don't care. You will just, uh, for example, for the 
classification I will explain now, I will receive new X clusters uh, that were changed, right? The message will belong to X cluster one, and then it, now it belongs to X cluster two, and I will generate the features for the classification, and I will receive the, uh, just what is the category of the current X cluster. The question was, uh, the, the obviously the data is changing, the templates can be changed, and then uh, similar content uh, will, will be classified to different X cluster. And I said that if the use cases later to extract the data, to classify the data are automatic, then uh, I don't care, I receive the message, I know what its category, what is the, the data, how to extract it, and then Okay, so the, the hash signature is only used uh, for the uh, algorithms after it. So this was my p first research project. Yeah. It can be millions a day, but I, I'm not sure I can share the exact numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fixed clusters. How do you deal with advertisements inside the, these pages? Yes. Yeah, so they can change the, the template for. Yeah. So it can be uh, it can be clustered to different clusters, right? But we also uh, I didn't uh, prepare this inside this presentation, but it is appears in the paper we published. We also have methods to combine several X clusters together. For example, for repetitions, because when we do the X cluster, we care about the order of the tags. We add also index. If it was a header one, header two, it will receive different X paths. We saw that if we remove the indexes, we called it naked X clusters, then if, for example, if you have the same message, but it, uh, someone bought one product, someone bought two products, and someone else four, it will be still the same naked X cluster if we remove the indexes because the X passes will look uh, the same. Also, we can have some eddy distance between the X passes to allow a larger uh, combination of X clusters, but for the automatic use case of mail classifications, I did it based on the X clusters. I, I don't care how many X clusters I receive, I, it's still a, amount, a high amount of messages in each X cluster to be able to classify them. Why do you want to use the X path of the text nodes? Uh, because uh, we wanted to extract textual data and it was the, what we are interested on in. Maybe we could uh, add the, tech, the images. I think it would work <laughs> not less than the current algorithm. Okay, so as I said, this was my first research project in Yao and my goal was given an X cluster of messages uh, to classify two categories. So here you, here you will see the categories I used. I, by, it was defined by the product. And this is not, the, uh, it's a random sample of X clusters, right, I, distribution. It's not uh, the traffic, okay? So in, in travel, you can see it's only 2%, but actually it means that they have 2% of different structures, X clusters. And a lot of other, and we saw it's uh, usually social uh, messages like Facebook, LinkedIn, that has a lot of, of, st of structures. It is uh, the other category. So the interesting categories that I wanted to classify the X clusters based on, uh, the X clusters is marketing, purchases, finance, events, travel, and services. So I will give you a high level on the process of the classification and I will go deeply inside each of the steps. So I received a cluster of messages and like in many machine uh, learning tasks, I want to generate the features. Here the features obviously are aggregated from all the messages, okay? Uh, and uh, I will go in deeply inside what features we used and uh, also the label data, right? I want, oh, I see it's not looks well. Uh, I see for each uh, X cluster, for example, amazon.com 57B and so on, the signature, it was labeled as shopping based on a sample, a few samples of messages and so on. When I have the features and the label data, I can uh, run the training, learning process and to do the classification. It is editorial based on uh, messages that are anonymized or 
human reviewable that users opt in uh, that we can use their messages. Okay, so important part of this project was to understand what features to use in order to be able to cluster. The obvious feature types are content that take the words and use them, uh, but also we saw that important symbols like money symbols, airport names, uh, were really uh, important here. And due to the fact that we aggregated it based on many messages, then if you have also airport code like sun, S-U-N, if it's appear in one message, you are not sure if it's sun or uh, sun uh, as an airport code, but here you have histogram of uh, airport code. And if I see that uh, I have a lot of appearances from uh, airport codes, it is a strong signal for my uh, learning uh, algorithm. Also user actions. Here again, a move to folder and also the name of the folder. If it has indicative name, it's a very strong feature. It's not something I could achieve if I were using only single message because most of the users will not use folders. It's rare uh, action to move the folder and to give it an indicative uh, name. But even if you, I have 100,000 of messages in the X cluster and 1% of the users gave the folder uh, indicating name, it's enough for all the messages or all the cluster uh, to help to label it according to the correct category. Traffic. Uh, traffic is another type of uh, features. I, for example, in marketing, we saw that uh, the message uh, has the, uh, the messages are sent in a burst. There is a traffic in the volume of the messages, and then it goes down. Uh, on the other hand, in purchases, it, it is a, not a marketing campaign. User can buy in every time, and it is not you don't have the burst in the traffic and the volume. Also, the weekend can be different from the usual days of the week. Uh, so it was also something we wanted to capture using those features. We also took the address, the sender uh, name and the domain, and we tried to locate indicating words inside the sender, like in tickets, uh, reservations. You can see that if you separate it to two words, it can help you with the classification. And last feature that is mostly uh, available due to the fact that we work with clusters that are structural, uh, we also count how deep is the XPath. Deep, I mean how many uh, HTML tags you have inside, because personal messages usually will be much shallow than the machine generated. That has a lot of tables, TR, uh, and so on. Also, a uh, variable and constant XPath. If you look on the message uh, based on the X clusters, some of the uh, base, uh, sorry in the X passes of the message, some X passes will have constant value. For example, thank you for your order. It will be the same for all the message in the thousand of messages. It will be thank you for your order. And if you have uh, the uh, high era, uh, high dotan, high Noah, it will be different from all the messages. I will call it variable X pass. So the percentage of uh, variable X passes and constant X passes also indicates that it is, for example, marketing because it will be uh, will have more constant X passes. Okay, so those were the features, and now let's go to the learning process. So we had a model for each category and trained one versus all. That means that, for, for example, for travel, I took the labels as positive and all the other categories were negative and non-travel. Uh, the same for marketing, those that are labeled as marketing are positive and all the others are not marketing. We run a logistic regression algorithm and prediction based on the highest score. For each model, we receive the score uh, based on the precision and the recall we wanted. We defined what is the minimum score we allow. If all the models will receive scores that is lower than the limit, we will say the category is other. It's not one of the categories we want to label. So now, what training data to take? Let's recall the distribution we saw. Let's assume we do a random sample of 1,000 X clusters and uh, we want to label them. We will receive only <laughs> two or a very small amount of travel uh, and uh, services and finance, but most of the X clusters will be other. 
it's not that interesting, right? We want to focus on the interesting categories. So how we did it? We had uh, around six, six and a half thousand X clusters in the, that were labeled. We sampled only 20% as a random because we still wanted to see the real traffic, right? The others, other is also interesting because we want our model to be able to separate the others. So we wanted to have those categories in our uh, training set. But uh, we also received 80% uh, of the X clusters for labeling distributed equally over all categories. The same for the test, we uh, did it equally distributed between the X clusters. And the way we did it is by few iterations. We uh, trained the model based on heuristics, so just noisy labels. And based on his, its classification, we could uh, uh, sample the examples because we had a noisy label based on the first uh, version of the model. And it was improved after uh, adding more label data. And then we could again increase the amount of labels based on the improved model output. Important note uh, is that this algorithm requires only a week of data in order to classify with pretty high precision recall. The features are aggregated over a week. And uh, it's a short uh, learning cycle. We have uh, another algorithm uh, that clusters based on the sender. And it required uh, three months of data or something to be aggregated. Here we have enough information, enough messages in a week. And we try to test uh, in different weeks for three months if the cluster, if the category for specific X clusters remains stable, remains the same. Because if one X cluster is cl in one week, it clustered as uh, marketing, and the week after it clustered like as travel, and uh, two weeks later it will be clustered as uh, events, something is not working here, okay? So it proved us that it's uh, reasonable that because the uh, labels remain stable for the X clusters. Before I go to the evaluation, I guess maybe for most of you it's clear, I just do want to make sure we all understand the uh, metrics. Uh, the metrics are simple precision recall. So if we have in the image on the left, uh, the, let's assume the full dots are the X clusters that uh, classified as travel. And the, the empty dots are the dots, uh, the X clusters that were classified as non-travel. In the circle in the middle are the X clusters that my model classified as travel. So you see the light green is the correct, okay? That is why my precision of my classification is the, the light green divided by the amount of results I classified as travel. On the other hand, it's not enough, right? Because I can give only when I want 99% sure that it's a travel, I will classify as travel. But then I will miss most of the travel uh, X clusters. That is why I also need the recall. Recall captures how many relevant items are selected. So I will divide the amount of travel items that I classified as travel, divided by the total amount of travel I had in the data, my truth. This will be my recall. So you understand that precision and recall is a trade-off. It based on the minimal limit I will select for the model. If I select very low limit for my model for travel, for example, then I will almost every example will be classified as travel. Even if I'm not one, uh, sure, I will classify it as travel. And then my recall will be high because I will classify many examples as travel and probably <laughs> I will capture all, almost all the travel, but my precision will be much lower, right? If I go up in the recall, my precision will be lower because if I, my limit for the model score is low, then many non-travel will be also classified as travel. And uh, the other side is obviously putting too high limits on my model is also not the best way because my precision will be high, but I will classify so low amount of uh, good examples that it's not very useful. That is why we, for each category, we selected the limit to receive a very nice uh, results of around 90% precision recall. You can see that it was har the hardest category was purchases, mostly because it was confusing with other categories like finance. 
Uh, the examples I remember, the example I remember confusing for me and the editors were with PayPal. Because in the PayPal receipt, you have the item you purchased, but it's actually finance and not purchase. So it's not very clear sometimes uh, how to classify. And it was also a little bit confusing for our, my classifiers. So, but I believe those results are good enough. OK, so <laughs> the conclusions. I talked about clustering machine-generated messages using the uh, structure. We saw that the structure is important because the header uh, uh, way of templates it has limitations. I uh, presented the classification use case with the 95-90 precision recall rates that are considered good rates for the classification, with a short cycle of, for learning only one week. Uh, my current project <laughs> is fully automated mail extractions. As I mentioned before, after I classify, then I know that it's travel. I want to be able to extract travel-related fields like what is the location user travels to, when it, he travels, uh, or currently we finished with the coupons. That is why we came with a clip the coupon field. So you understand that in order to be able automatically extract the data, you also need first to classify the cluster to know what fields you want to extract, right? So if it's purchase, you will extract the product. If it's travel, you will extract the location. It's very different. So just uh, <laughs> if you want to know more about the project we do, you can go to a paper <laughs> in Ynet. And this is my team. Here we do, besides the machine generated projects, we also have a lot of uh, projects related to uh, search in mail, uh, also papers that were published. published. This, paper, uh, this uh, presentation is based on mainly on two uh, papers that were published in international conferences. <laughs> and you have here much more details than I covered here. And last but not least, Obviously, the results here derived from analysis on Yao Mail data aggregated or originally from opt-in users. We preserve user privacy, obviously, in such sensitive data as mail. So it's important. <laughs> Even though we publish the papers, we all also always think about these issues. Thank you. Thank you.